Hi there, welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia for episode 282, I believe. Today is Wednesday, May 10th, 2023, and I've got two projects for you tonight using the, I'm cheating here, <laughs> the bright and beautiful suite. So let me give you a quick sneak peek. We've got an envelope gift card holder and a quick and easy card, a celebration card. I love this suite. I was working on, um, I'm working on product shares this week. As you can see, there's a, I'm pointing the wrong way, a giant stack of designer series paper. That's the bright and beautiful or whatever the name of the paper is from that suite. I'm working on that as we speak tonight. And I fell in love with the designer series paper. So it inspired me to make tonight's projects. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. Hello to my replay warriors as well. Brian, are you ready for your cameo? Brian is here watching for your questions and comments tonight. If you do have a question for me, be sure to put a Q in front of that question. That will make it into my Q when we do the Q&A at the end of the live stream. That will allow me to focus on demonstrating tonight's projects and I will stay on at the end to answer all of your questions. Let's see, when you shop with me, you earn Pixie perks on orders of $25 or more. You do need to use the current host code on orders under $150 in order to earn Pixie perks. And the easiest way to do that is to use my magic shopping link, the paperpixie.com slash shop. That will auto magically add my current host code to your order for you so you don't have to worry about it. If your order is $150 or more, don't add the host code because you're going to earn Stampin' Rewards from Stampin' Up to use on that order, but you will also earn Pixie Perks from me as well. We are just a few weeks, is it a few weeks? Not quite two weeks into the new 2023 to 2024 annual catalog. I'm still finding products that I'm adding to my wish list as I each time I go through that catalog, I find something new. So um, that is available for ordering. That started, I think it was on May 2nd. And I've got some show and tell for you from Nolan. He's our first grader. I think it was this weekend they were watching mm. Draw So Cute. Um, Winnie, I think is her name. And he's got um, bacon, which is adorable, eggs, a burger, fries, and watermelon. And they're so cute. They, um, He and his sister, Lily and Nolan, will watch and pause and color and pause. <laughs> so it's fun. That, I believe, is orange juice. I love the little ice cubes with smiley faces. And then we've got a pancake. What did he say that was? I don't remember now. Pancake with a dollop of butter on the top, which is so cute. But I don't remember what these two characters are. But how cute is that? I love to watch their um, creativity evolve over time. I don't have anything from Lily this week, I don't think. There you go. Can I pass those to you? All right, so um, here is what we're going to create tonight. Let me show you them up close. This is the card. Now, I'm probably going to tweak both of these projects just a little bit because as I was making them, I had some other ideas that popped into my head. Um, this is a little bit, for me, too much white space down here. So I think I'm going to bring the uh, balloon down when we create it. But that is that dazzling something or other <laughs> paper. I always forget the name of it. Um, but it's really pretty. It almost has like this mesh netting and uh, glitter underneath, but it does die cut like a dream. So that's the outside of the card. And then there's the inside. So thrilled for you. The um, sweet collection is perfect for celebrations like graduation or birthdays. And then this project, uh, my dear friend Pam, who's also my up up line, she stopped by today and reminded me of her awesome gift card or envelope gift card holder. Um, so what's really cool about this, it's a belly band and it is actually one of our medium envelopes to create. Now this is a fake gift card. This is the 3D printed one that Brian made for me or maybe you made it for yourself and I've commandeered it. Uh, but it is a great... Um, very fun, easy project to take giving a gift card up a notch using our medium envelopes. So we're going to create both of these projects today. I'm going to tweak this one a little bit as well. And my little bow is cattywampus there. We may use a mini glue dot to tell that where to stay put. <laughs> so we're going to start with the envelope gift card holder. And let me go ahead and get my supplies here ready. And actually, while before I jump into that, let me quickly show you the suite we're doing tonight. This is bright and beautiful and it's on pages 14 and 15. 
In the suite, you get both the stamp and die bundle, the designer series paper, and then the specialty uh, window sheets that's got some gold foiling on it. It's really, really pretty. I haven't cut into it yet for paper shares, but it's coming. And then here's the stamp set up close. I love the way that this sentiment works with the balloons. But again, a great set for both birthdays and graduation or any other type of celebration. And I haven't quite gotten myself organized. I did get the dies to fit on the magnet card, but I haven't created my envelopes for it yet. But lots of really great dies in this. I love the two star dies, lots of balloon dies. And this one I think we're going to use tonight. This is going to create sort of a... Um, I, the name will come to me eventually. My... <laughs> My brain is fried. Gives a little bit of a fringe. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, so we're going to try to use that tonight when I kind of make a couple tweaks to the card. Okay. And then let me quickly share with you, since I had the product shares out, let me show you this paper up close. It is a six by six paper. And so let me show you both sides. I'm going to kind of flip as we go this way. So you can see both sides. I love the stars. Sort of this ombre watercolor look here. Love this one. So each time I was flipping this paper for uh, paper shares, I'm like, ooh, I love that one. Ooh, I love that one. It's really one of my favorite things about working with the paper for shares is I kind of get up close and personal with it. This one is fun. It's almost like rainbows that they put together to make those circles. I'll pull it up a little bit closer for you. Not cool. Really cool look. So this is a six by six pack. You get 48 sheets for each of 12 double-sided designs. This one's my favorite because I love stars. <laughs> and then I love this diagonal pattern here. So there you have it. And the name of that paper. Oh, bright and beautiful, fancy that. <laughs> it's the beautiful balloons bundle, the bright and beautiful designer series paper. Gold Celebrations Specialty Designer Series Paper, which is kind of a window sheet. You can see it here. All right. Bringing in my pieces and parts here. Let's go ahead and start with what we need to do to the envelope. Now, I will have a project sheet for this one. I don't know. I don't think I'll do a project sheet for the card because it's really straightforward. But this one, I'll make sure you've got a picture of it and then the uh, measurements so that you can recreate this yourself. And Pam, if you're watching, I've pixified your measurements just slightly to make a little bit more room for the gift card. You can use either the Simply Scored or your paper trimmer, whatever scoring tool is your favorite. And then I'm going to go ahead and actually open the flap. It's a little bit easier to score when you do it that way. And I'm going to line up the bottom of the envelope, so that's the long side of the envelope here at the top. And then all I'm going to do is go ahead and score at 4 and 1 8 from each side. So 4 and 1 8 and I'm actually just going to flip it to make it easier. No big deal that the score lines are on opposite sides, but four and one eighth from each side. Okay. So then you end up having these vertical lines and then you're going to have space here for the gift card. All right. So then I'm just going to go ahead and grab my bone folder and I'm going to fold and burnish on those score lines. Just kind of taking my time. You've got sort of multiple layers here that are folding over on themselves. So come in and burnish. It behaves a little bit more differently than cardstock, so just take your time there. And then we can go ahead and fold the flap down like so. I'm just going to come in and burnish again. It's kind of a cool little pocket there. Okay, so that's how you do it. You open up the flap, score it four and one eighths from each side. Then you're going to go ahead and fold in, it doesn't matter, right or left, and then the flap down. And that's going to be kind of your gift card pocket mechanism there. Okay. Next I've got, let me make sure I can see my measurement notes here. For the cardstock, we're using Berry Burst, which I'm so happy that this paper is back, How or this color is back. How gorgeous is that color? I think it's coming through true to color on the camera here. This piece measures four and five eighths in height by two and three quarters in width. And we're actually going to be adhering the envelope to that. This is going to be kind of our base. 
Okay, so for that, I'm just gonna use liquid glue. You can use something like Stamp and Seal or Stamp and Seal Plus. And I'm again on the back side of this little pocket that we've created with liquid glue. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and press that down. Again, liquid glue gives us a chance to slide things into place. And once I kind of get it starting to stick, then I'll go ahead and open this just to give me a little bit more leverage to press from the inside. And I do like to um, kind of burnish with my fingers on the glue line so we don't see those lines through the envelope. Okay, so like that, all right? Now the next thing is I've got a piece of designer series paper, and this is the fun part. You can pick whatever designer series paper you have in your stash, depending on the occasion you're creating this gift card holder for. And this piece measures four and three eighths inch by two and a half. And we're actually only going to glue that to the flap. So the trick here is actually to add the adhesive to the flap instead of to the designer series paper. And that just ensures you don't get glue where you don't want it. Like so, okay. And then I'm just gonna bring in my designer series paper and just line that up to that top folded edge. It does help to kind of pick it up and slide things into place with the liquid glue. Just make sure that that's lined up all the way around. You've got about an eighth of an inch of the berry burst peeking out. And again, I can kind of open this and press from the inside to smooth out those glue lines. Now, if you're in sort of a humid place, this might get a little sticky on you. So if you wanted to, you could cover that with some designer series paper. Although I haven't personally experienced that issue with the adhesive. Okay, so there's that. Let me grab the gift card. Maybe I have a fancier one. How about an Outback Steakhouse one? <laughs> you guys are always so funny. You're like, don't forget about the gift card. I often find gift cards in my projects after a long, long time. <laughs> now we're gonna need something to hold this together. My preference is a belly band because I think it makes it kind of fun to decorate this and it's sort of a the decoration and it holds this together but you could also do a velcro dot if you wanted to or a magnet as well although with magnets I don't think there's maybe there's a myth does it affect this the gift cards maybe a magnet it might but I'm not sure I'd probably just use a velcro dot um, but again belly band is my preference and I'm just going to do a one inch strip this is blueberry bushel this is one inch by six. There's not a lot of wiggle room with six inches, so you might want to go up to six and a half, but I'm just gonna stick to six. And I'm just gonna basically lay this down on my work surface and then center this over the top here, okay? Now what I'm gonna do then is just fold these around and I'm not doing it too tightly, but I'm just making sure that those are gonna line up there in the middle. Okay, and as you can see, there's only about a quarter of an inch of overlap there. So if you wanted a little bit more, you could go longer than six. I'm just gonna come in and put a little bit of liquid glue on my belly band, okay? Nowhere else, but right there to the edge. Bring that up a little bit closer. And then I can fold this down. Just kind of lining up those edges as I do that and hold that in place. And then I'll just kind of want to practice sliding this on and off. It's a little bit tight to start with, but then eventually it will loosen up like that, okay? And I purposely put the seam here in the middle because we're actually going to hide that. And hiding it underneath our embellishment means that it's got a nice finish on the back, okay? So this comes from the... I don't have my cheat sheet here the beautiful balloons bundle. It's a tag that already has kind of confetti punched out. I love that. And I'm gonna change this up just a little bit. I did cut a balloon from the uh, Azure Afternoon. That's one of our new blues. I think I'm gonna do that and then ultimately lay the star over the top. I kind of liked those layers together. We're gonna stamp on the star though. And this bundle, the Beautiful Balloons bundle, is a photopolymer bundle, which means I can die cut first because I can see exactly where I'm stamping. So I'm gonna come in with Blueberry Bushel. 
and we're going to stamp yay you right in the center of that star. See how much of a mess I make here. I didn't. Yay. Yay, Julie. <laughs> actually, I'm going to leave the ink pad out because I forgot. I actually did stamp on the envelope on the inside. All right. Let's see. We're going to stamp that right here above the fold in the envelope flap. And that is the... Let's see, I think it's time for a celebration. It's a little bit of a tight fit here, so take your time. You grab that question. Okay, thank you. There we go. I think it's time for a celebration. Love that. Okay, before I make a mess. <laughs> belly band assemble and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring in my silicone mat just in case I make a little bit of a mess here I'm going to kind of do a little bit of a vignette here so just kind of on the side there with liquid glue like that and then the yay you I kind of center that like so but I love that paired with that balloon behind it it just added a little extra oomph like that okay and then the other thing I'm going to do is tie a little bow now this is going back to the zoo crew suite but it's such an adorable ribbon to use with the Bright and Beautiful Suite. We've got Lemon Lime Twist. This was the ribbon combo pack that comes with the Zoo Crew Suite, but I love this because it's an eighth of an inch. It's got some cute stitching to it as well. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna feed that through the back of the hole in our little tag. And then we're gonna do a bow here. I think I probably want my reverse tweezers <laughs> to be my third hand here. All right, let's hold that knot into place. Thank you, tweezers. And then we'll tie a bow. If you're a bow challenge, you could just do a little ribbon pull here as well. Pull that tight and remove my tweezers. And now let's zhuzh. By nature of the, the hole in this tag, your ribbon is going to turn out a little bit cattywampus, but it's cute regardless. So go ahead and cut the tails off. And just as it kind of rotates around that hole punch on the tag, you'll see that it kind of goes a little crazy. So if you wanted to uh, make that stay put, let me show you a little trick. Glue dots are your friend. I'm going to get this pinned up so that I don't, doesn't go crazy. All right, so mini glue dot. Let me pick one of those up with my take your pick tool. I'm actually gonna kind of roll it onto itself kind of halfway because I only need like a little bit. And then I'm just gonna kind of come in behind this side. I'm hiding it like just underneath the bow. No one's gonna see that, but that's gonna let me kind of position the bow where I want it. And that should keep it in place for us like that okay now I'm going to use some liquid glue here just right along the center again we don't want it to be more than an inch hopefully I put that in the right spot and then we can go ahead and glue that to our belly band now I'm going to just make sure I don't have glue where I don't want it, and we're good. I'm just going to kind of press that there. All 
like so, okay? So let me show you the inside before we finish this off. I think it's time for a celebration. We've got our gift card in here. You could put a check or some cash as well. I wouldn't put a lot of folded up bills because that will just bulk this up a little bit, um, but check or gift card is probably best. So go ahead and fold in the sides, fold down the flap, and you've got an envelope gift card holder. Super cute, and I think I need a little bit of bling. Let's add a little bling to it. I can't help myself. Just pop that right there. Super cute. Yay, so fun. Okay, I hope you guys may have seen this before. I think Pam Morris, she's been doing it for 20 years or so, and I just think it's such a cool way to use our envelopes. Quick and easy way to use a gift card, or to give a gift card, jazzing it up a little with not too much paper and envelopes that I know we all have in our stash. Okay. All right, let's move on to the card here. Oops. All right, pieces and parts. Let's see. We're going to start with kind of along the berry burst theme. I've got a berry burst card, card base that measures 11 inches by four and a quarter inches. It's scored in half at five and a half. And I'm going to turn that valley score line into a mountain fold and burnish. Okay, I need my card for inspiration so I don't forget. All right, so that's the card base. Um, let's see, let's go ahead and work on a couple of different pieces here. Now, this piece comes from that Bright and Beautiful Designer Series paper and this piece measures five inches by one inches. That's gonna ultimately get adhered to this piece, which is basic white, and that measures five inches by three and three quarter inches. But I want to attempt to do this fringe piece here, so let's see how this works. <laughs> um, all right, let me bring back the die really quick. So we've got this piece right here, which you can probably hear that on the microphone. <laughs> um, that is actually gonna do some slits in the paper. And we don't want to do, we don't want to center this on the paper because then all we're going to have is slits. So I actually want to make sure that I leave a little bit that doesn't get the fringe cuts so that I can adhere that to our card. So let me go ahead and bring in the um, stamp and cut and emboss machine. And we're going to try this and see how it works out. I'm actually going to use my post-it tape just to kind of keep this in place. And again, I don't want it to go all the way to the edge. So give me a second. Let me get some post-it tape just to kind of anchor that die so that the fringe is even. And then I just want to double check to make sure that the fringe is going to go off the edge there, or it should say that the die is going to cut off the edge so that we're going to end up with fringe. Okay. So I'm going to put this at an angle on my cutting plate. That's just kind of um, keeps the speed bumps away or those big bumps you hear as they go through the rollers. And then we'll see how this works. All right, let me get this out of the way for a second. We'll come back to die cut here in a second. All right, let's see. Dun dun dun, drum roll. Let's see how this worked. Oh, that's good, good and stuck on there. Let's get my post-it tape out of here. Oh, too cute, look at that. So if you wanted to, you could um, curl those edges just a little bit to give them texture. I'm actually probably gonna leave them as they are. Maybe just, I don't know, give them a little bit of texture. But then what I'm gonna do is on that five inch by three and three quarter inch piece, we're gonna go ahead and glue this down. So we've got a little bit of fringe there on the edges. I do kind of think I might need to do something a little bit with that fringe. Let's just use our bone folder gently here. And just kind of curl it a little bit. Be something fun for the recipient to play with as well. Like that. Okay, so that piece is gonna line up right along the edge of that piece. And then I can put adhesive right along where we didn't put the fringe uh, slits, okay? 
So I do want to glue this piece down. That's going to help me kind of eyeball where I'm going to stamp and position the rest of the elements of the card. So again, just a little bit of liquid glue where those slit pieces are not, or where those slits are not. And then I'm just lining this up with the edges like so. That's cute, kind of a fun element there. Just kind of playing with them. I feel like I'm playing that, I forget what it's called. <laughs> There's an instrument that makes the kalimba. That's what it reminds me of, the kalimba pieces, only not flicking them the right way. <laughs> All right, so there is that. Now what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and stamp our sentiment and our balloon and then the little tassel for the balloon, okay? So I'm gonna bring in my scrap piece of basic white. I'm gonna start with Berry Burst. And actually while the Berry Burst is out, let's maximize our stamping here. I've got another layer for the inside of our card and this piece measures five, five and a quarter inches by four. I had to think about that for a second. And I'm gonna take the sentiment so thrilled for you. I can tell my ink pads are juicy. It's getting ink all over the stamp there. And then this little confetti piece, which is so cute. I'm just gonna kind of anchor that sentiment with the confetti, like so for the inside, okay? Put that off to the side, we'll adhere that in a minute. And then let's stamp the tassel piece. Just gonna stamp that right there on the basic white. We're gonna die cut that, actually. since we still have the ink pad out, maximizing our time here. I'm gonna, again, I mentioned, I'm gonna bring the uh, sentiment down a little bit. Let me look at my sample one more time. Cause I wanna uh, reduce some of the white space down here. So I'm gonna kinda line this up next to it. And this says, let's get our celebration on. It's a fun sentiment. All right, I'm gonna bring it down. Just a little bit. Hopefully that's not too much. There we go. Okay. Now we can put our berry burst away. All right, and then for the balloon, I was doing a couple of things. Let me show you um, a failed experiment. I was doing, um, I stamped in the lemon lolly first. Now I'm chuckling a little bit because I sent my up up line with a couple of projects to help me with. And she's got my lemon lime twist ink pad, but parakeet party works really well with the sweet as well. So I stamped it originally in lemon lolly. And then I was trying to probably if I uh, practice a little bit more, I took a sponge dauber with the parakeet party. And then I was actually inking up the edges of the uh, balloon stamp, but I just didn't like the way that it turned out. But that's an option for you if you wanted to give a little bit of a different color shading. For this, I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp the lemon lolly and we're gonna add a little bit of detail using parakeet party. Let's get this out of the way. And <laughs> I had to go um, raid my daughter's paper pumpkin boxes because I had a lot of my D uh, clear blocks in them, but I couldn't find enough. So we're gonna use this giant one for the balloon stamp and I'm gonna go ahead and ink this up in Lemon Lolly. Let's put it down here. And my stamping surface has a little bit of give. If you don't have something like this that's like a neoprene surface, I recommend, especially with these full coverage stamps, to use something like the Stampin' Pierce mat. That's gonna give you a little bit of cushion, especially with the photopolymer, because they don't come with cushion like our red rubber does, okay? Now I know that ink pad is deceiving, but it is actually that beautiful yellow. And then we've got kind of this confetti piece that's gonna fit over that balloon piece. And I'm gonna stamp that for a little subtle texture in the parakeet party, but also lemon lime twist would work as well. 
kind of get that fun confetti happening there. There's already some stars on the big balloon stamp as well. I'm hearing the pitter patter of feet. All right, so we're gonna die cut. So we've got our big balloon, and then we've got our tassel die cut here. And we're gonna do those both at the same time. So let me get some post-it tape. I love how these dies leave a little bit of white space around the stamped image. Just thinks it, I think it gives it a really nice look. And then one more here. What is he doing up there? I'm gonna go check. <laughs> Nolan sounds like he's Rumpelstiltskin upstairs right now. All right, let's get this going. All right. I think that's all I had to die cut. I did already die cut the star. Now the question is, am I gonna find it again? I may be die cutting another star. Um, all right, so there is the balloon or balloon. I think I used to say as a kid. And there's our little berry burst tassel. All good. All right, so liquid glue, I'm gonna go ahead again I don't trust myself with the glue tonight. <laughs> I'm just gonna put a little dab of glue at the top of the tassel. Like real, oops, as I put my fingernail in it, but real tiny bit of glue there. And then I can bring the balloon to it. So you've got the tassel hanging. This is a bit of a case from the catalog samples, like so, okay? Now let's hope this isn't gonna run off the edge of our paper here. Perfect. Okay. Oh, and I found my star. That's a good sign. All right. So let's go ahead and assemble. We've got our card base and then we've got our stamped inside piece. Again, that was five and a quarter by four. I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. And I'll show you both the sample and the ones we created tonight so you can see the subtle differences. Always loved that game, the spot the differences. <laughs> there we go. We got that on the inside, okay? And you could add different colors if you wanted to for that. And then I'm going to go ahead and take this layer. I'm digging that fringe. That's very cool. This is gonna go on the front. We have about a quarter of an inch of the berry burst peeking through. Love that color. <laughs> My brother says, I swear that glue is magic. It is magic, Gregors. All right, so there's that. And then we're gonna do a combination of regular dimensionals and minis for our balloon, our balloon. <laughs> Does that remind you of dad, Greg? Balloon. All right. We'll do four big ones and then two little minis to hold up the tassel for us. So just did that. Thought I could do those all at once. <laughs> all right, there we go. Then this is gonna fit right underneath our sentiment. I do like that brought down more. That made a difference, didn't it? And then I've got our die cut dazzling something or other. Hold on, I gotta look up that paper, hold on. 
<laughs> the specialty paper. Let's see. It's on page 127. Can't miss it because it's right in the middle. And that is the More Dazzle Specialty Paper. It's a glittery paper. You get eight single-sided sheets, four champagne and four gold. I'm going to show you what that looks like up close. Look at that. That's the champagne. And there's the gold. Isn't that so pretty? Mm, love that. It reminds me a little bit of the paper we had from Celebration a couple years ago, but it's slightly different. And I'm just going to add that for a little bit of bling right there on our balloon. Let's see. Should it go on this side? I like it on the right side. I'm normally, I normally put things on the left, but I think because of the fringe, this will anchor better on the right. Cute. And you can just put liquid glue on the back of that. There's nothing special. It's got a paper backing. So there we have our little celebration card. So thrilled for you. Here's the other one. So we didn't have the fringe. And then I brought the balloon down a little bit and moved the star to the side. So those are the cards. And then with the gift card, let me show you the differences. This was the sample. And there was tonight's project. I love that addition of the balloon. You can use any of the colors here on the background designer series paper, um, but I love just adds a little bit more oomph to that. And we made our bow stay put by adding a little mini glue dot behind the, uh, the right side of that bow. So there we go, that's tonight's projects. Yay, now it's time for some Q and A. So let me go ahead and get that teed up. I saw some great questions coming through. Let's see. Q. Carol Salaji, how do you manage to keep your fingers clean when stamping? After I've been stamping, I look like I've been finger painting. Um, that is a good question. Um, I don't know, practice, but I will say I get ink on my fingers fairly often. I actually had a leaky ink refill the other day, so you can imagine what my fingers looked like <laughs> after cleaning up that mess. But um, I don't know, when you get inky fingers, it's the sign of a good time in your stamping space. So um, I don't know, I don't have any special tips for you, but the nice thing is it's water-based, so it washes off pretty easily. I did say auto magically. That's what I call my little magic link, the paperpixie.com slash shop, because it auto magically adds the host code to your order. We are going to Norway. What's the countdown? We leave a week from Saturday. So we cannot wait. We cannot wait. I don't know how we're going to get to that point, right? We leave on Saturday? A week from Saturday. So we leave on Saturday or Sunday? We leave on a Saturday, but we arrive in London on a Sunday. <laughs> so yes, we're excited. And we're bringing lots of layers because I think the forecast is like 40s and 50s. <laughs> so I don't care what the weather's like. I'm just excited to have a week of vacation, which would be awesome. Let's see. Will the half circle stamp work with the new, the half circle stamp, work with the new circle punch, the two and three eighths, the half circle stamp? Linda, clarify that because I'm not sure what, what you mean unless you're talking about in the, oh, you're asking about this, the half circle stamp in this set. I'm with you. <laughs> um, good question. Let me try it. If I can find my punch. Hold on. All right, let me stamp this on a scrap piece of paper. Oh, and like you can see what I'm doing. Hold on, demo, here we go. I'm gonna kind of bring that down. I'm making a mess here at my clear block. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, two and three eighths. Mm, not quite. But um, the trick to that, Linda, is you can actually, because the stamp set is photopolymer, which, let me clean up my mess really quick and show you what I'm talking about. All right. So that I don't get my fingers too inky here. 
All right, so one of the things you can do is um, bend your stamp to fit the punch. So let me show you a trick here. I'm just gonna take a scrap piece of basic white, punch that out, just so that I kind of have an idea of where I want that stamp to be. And then I'm gonna actually peel this off. I'm gonna kind of hold that on the clear block here. And you can actually bend the photopolymer to fit. See if that works. It looks pretty good. I might have bent it a little bit too much. You can just kind of pick it up and slide it around and then we'll, I'll stamp this and we'll see what it looks like. Let's bring that in just a hair like that. Okay. So you can kind of trick your photopolymer to fit. And I'm actually going to stamp it just right on that punch out that I did. Boom. So there you go. Yes, it can fit. Just needs a little bit of working, uh, but that's one of the benefits of photopolymer. Great question, Linda. All right, let's come back to this. All right, next question. The black lines on my scoreboard, Raquel, those are just really to help me with diagonal score lines. Um, so for example, I can see if I'm gonna put my paper kind of on a diagonal, I can see the score line or that black line at both the top of the paper and the bottom so that I can see that I'm scoring um, straight down on something. It's just, it's more to help than anything. I added the three inch line, but I don't use it. The six inch line I use all the time. So forget the three inch line. <laughs> I might try to remove that if I can with some rubbing alcohol. Um, but yeah, it's really just that I can follow a score line from top to bottom. How do I store my embossing folders? So Carol, I put them in a Stampin' Storage Creative Crate, which you'll actually be able to find on, let me close that. You'll be able to find on my favorites page here. Um, the Creative Crates, I use a bunch of different sizes. They've got kind of small, medium, and large. I usually use a combination of the medium and large for storing uh, embossing folders, die sets, as well as six by six designer series paper. They're kind of a good catch all storage item. And again, that Stampin' Storage Creative Crate. I have them in a drawer, otherwise I would lift it out and show it to you, but it's a little bit too cumbersome to do so. I did leave the sticky part of the envelope, uh, Ruby, um, but if you wanted to, you could cover that with some designer series paper, um, just in case you're worried about uh, humidity or moisture getting that. Let's see, do all of the refresh colors and new in colors have blends? Oh, I'm thinking about that off the top of my head. Well, let me check. Let me get to the color page here, or color pages. Um, one, two, three, four, five. I'm just checking that they all have blends. Yes. All five new in colors and all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven new or returning colors. They all have stamp and blends. Okay. All right. You could absolutely do that too, Nancy. She's suggesting to cut the glue part off the envelope. You sure could do that. You'll have you'll still have plenty of the flap. Um, remaining to glue the designer series paper to. So that's a great suggestion. Ah, yes, the size of the tag, Joanne, great question. Let me go ahead and measure that. Probably be easier to measure the die itself. So the tag is three inches tall by one and a half inches wide. Okay, so three by one and a half for the tag. I noticed that you and a lot of other demonstrators don't clean your stamps right away. Does it make it more difficult to clean later or does the ink clump up on the stamp? So part of why I don't clean my stamps right away is because I'm trying to move fairly quickly through the projects for the live stream and I don't want you guys to have to wait for me to clean my stamps, but there are no problems cleaning stamps after the fact. In fact, even with the photopolymer, 
I've been known to not clean them for a long period of time and then I end up throwing them into a dish bin with some dish soap and cool water to get them really clean and kind of bring their sticky back a little bit and I let them air dry on a lint free cloth. But I have no problems with, there's no difference between leaving ink on versus cleaning it off right away. Um, sometimes the photopolymer or oftentimes the photopolymer is going to stain regardless of how long you leave the ink on depending on what color the ink is. The ink is. But yes, if I were, um, doing what I would like to do, I would clean them right away, but I don't want you guys to have to wait for me to do that while I'm live streaming, but I should do that when I'm stamping on my own, shouldn't I, Brian? Brian often gets the task of cleaning my stamps when they pile up. Oh, goodness. It's the, it's the creative mind. Those of us that have creative minds, we're always moving on to the next project. Does anybody else do that? <laughs> That's what I tell myself anyways. How do you decide when it's time to replace your cut cutting plates? Christina, honestly, I re would replace them in for basically two reasons. One, they crack, which can happen once you've used them a lot. Um, or they're just so warped beyond um, usability, meaning I'm having issues with it die cutting because it's too warped. That's when I would probably um, replace with some new plates but I get those things to last a really long time you get them to last really really long because he's really diligent diligent about flipping so um let's see and do I have a tutorial for the boxes on page 128 I think you may have asked me that on um YouTube and I haven't had a chance to respond to you I have no idea the size of those boxes so I need to check to see if there's any information on the supply list that Stampin' Up! provides us um and if not I might see if they can provide a little bit more details about those boxes so I don't know if I have I might have something similar but it's interesting I can't tell she's talking about these boxes on page 128. I'm not sure what they what the closure is on those, but they're really cute and they're so perfectly made. I love that. So I'll see what I can find out about that. What do you do with the cards you make? Do they get sent to friends and family or do I donate them? They typically get sent um, or used, you know, at some point I may give them to somebody, um, but they typically are sent out. Do I ever bulk batch make your projects aside from prepping for swaps? Not usually, Nicole, um, other than for swaps. I'll do the bulk, the bulk batching. Now, like with product shares, I'll be making a bunch of, I don't want to spoil the surprise, but I do make a, multiples of stuff, so I'll do a bulk batch of that. Um, and yeah, it's typically just for swaps when I do sort of the bulk. Um, we used it for the kids. I used to for the kids, yeah, when I did their kind of favors for daycare. Um, but for the most part, I, I usually will make like two to four of a project, like a card, um, oftentimes between the sample and then what I create for the video and then what I um, create. Do I create? I usually have two or three, I think. But yeah, good question. So Raquel, um, it is the Stampin' Up! incentive trip. So this year for 2023, those of us that earned the Stampin' Up! incentive trip, we're going on a seven night cruise through the Norwegian fjords, which I'm really excited about. We'll fly in and out of Heathrow, which is a, I mean, fairly quick. I mean, it's many hours, but uh, it's a straight shot for us from, it's not straight, but we can fly direct from Atlanta to Heathrow, and then we're about 90 minutes from the Southampton port, and we'll board a Royal Caribbean's cruise ship for seven nights through the Norwegian fjords. We're going to hang out with Anna and Elsa, I've been telling the kids. <laughs> Is there a secret to using the small total elements magnets? The only secret really, Kathy, is to make sure that you line up the uh, positive and negative. And you can typically do that by adhering one of the magnets and dropping the other one on top of it so you can get those lined up properly. Um, other than that, when I use those, I typically use mini glue dots. And so I will actually take the magnet to the roll of, um, and I can actually show you, let me grab one.
So for example, I will take that tiny little magnet and it's a perfect fit for our mini glue dot. So I will just stick it right onto the glue dot itself like that. And then I'll either use my fingernails to pick it up or I'll use the take your pick tool. That's not gonna focus to pick it up off the mini glue dots roll. So just a couple of tips there. Love the total element magnets. So if you're interested in checking those out, uh, I've got an affiliate link, thepaperpixie.com slash total element, and that link will auto magically take you directly to the size and quantity of uh, magnets that I purchased from total element. And if you use the coupon code paperpixie, you'll also get 10% off your order. Um, they ship for free, they're based in the US, and I love working with them, they're great. So photopolymer, okay, we got a question from my brother Greg. Is there a way you can make custom stamps with the material that adheres to the glass block? Well, I know that they can be made, but Stampin' Up! does not make the um, personalized stamps. But yes, it is possible to get those made. There are a couple of companies out there that do that. Um, but yeah, and it'll stick right to those clear acrylic blocks. I love the photopolymer. I do not have a craft room tour, uh, Joy. Um, I keep pushing it off. Uh, life has just been a little bit crazy uh, for the last, I don't know, I feel like it's been forever years. Um, but after just losing my dad and travel and all kinds of stuff, that um, craft room tour just keeps getting pushed back. And my craft room is a hot mess. I don't know if you noticed during the countdown timer, but apparently my camera was frozen and we were here, but you couldn't see us on the behind the scenes countdown. But yeah, there's quite the mess in my craft room at the moment. When you return from the cruise, will you be introducing us to some Norway treats to make fun gift boxes? That is a great question. I cannot promise anything because I am going on vacation. So <laughs> I'm not sure, um, you know, we're, we didn't sign up for any excursions. We really are just going to take that time to take in the sights and relax and just kind of breathe and... Um, yeah, it's, it's vacation time for me, so I can't promise I'm going to be buying a bunch of treats. And if you know me when I travel, I do not check bags. I just don't do it. So um, whatever I purchase will have to fit in my carry-on bag on the way back. So we do get to do... Um, It'll have to be under the dollar amount, too. Under the dollar amount from for a customs <clears throat> perspective. <laughs> my accountant husband over here. Um, so every morning on the ship, we get to go to the hospitality room with Stampin' Up, which means, I, well, in the past, you could spin a wheel for prizes. So I'm hoping to get some fun new product. We'll see. So I'll keep you posted. Would a cube pattern work for boxes on 128? Yes. Um, I've got a couple of Boxes that are like a no adhesive box, something like that would work as well, where it's got five sides and two of the sides overlap to kind of hold the box together. Um, so there's a couple of ways to do those boxes for sure. Oh, great. That's awesome, Sarah. She uses your technique on the embossing plates and they last much longer. Awesome. And the technique we're talking about, because I know you're going to ask um, and help me remember, you take whenever the top plate starts to warp a little bit, you take it and put it on the bottom. Flip it. You flip it and put it on the bottom. So it flattens it up. Gotcha. Because it gets cute, gets concave like that. Yeah. And so you take the top one and flip it. Right. And put it on the bottom. Yeah. Until the top one gets curved, then you flip it. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do that with my hands. <laughs> they are not joining us. It is just a trip for Brian and I, so... It wouldn't be vacation if they were. <laughs> Brian said it wouldn't be vacation if they joined us. They're going to have all kinds of fun with their family here. So I think they're actually excited for us to go because they're going to get spoiled rotten by their aunt and their grandmother. <laughs> oh, yeah, Shauna, you had the same question there. Do I have a tutorial for a bookmark using a magnetic closure, or if not, any plans to do a bookmark using magnets? I do not have one currently, but that's a great suggestion. I will keep that in mind for a possible future project. Thanks, darling. Oh yeah, Colleen had the same question too. The kids are not joining us. It's just Brian and I. 
and a whole bunch of other Stampin' Up! demonstrators and their plus ones. It'll be fun. I'm excited. All right, I have reached the end of the cues. There we go, that worked this time. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you enjoyed tonight's live stream, be sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Smash that bell icon so you'll get notified each time I have a new video ready. And thank you so much for joining us. I hope you guys have a wonderful and blessed week. I will be live again next Wednesday. We're still going to be here before the incentive trip. So a week from tonight, episode 283 will be live. Thanks for joining me. Thanks to those of you watching on replay. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me at support at thepaperpixie.com. And don't forget, all you need are stamps, ink, and a little paper pixie. Have a wonderful and blessed week, and I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.